And we are, 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 we are live. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. This is the FTW Podcast, a wrestling world in all its laughable glory. This is episode 142, coming to you live on December 4th, 2012. Tonight we're talking about how TLC is shaping up the road to final resolution. My name is not Harrison, thank God. My name is Joe, and with us tonight is Rob. Say hello, Rob. Yeah, we took Harrison out back and, you know, buried him. <laughs> and we also have Lee. Come on, Oh, no, we have me. We always have me. Yes. Well, it's a pleasure to have you too, Lee. And it Garvin is... a pleasure is, to have myself. And Garvin is mar- uh, manning the boards, or marrying the boards, whatever the hell I'm going to spew out of my mouth. We're if married you're listening now. Through, I- <laughs> Super! Uh, if you're listening through <laughs> iTunes, YouTube, or through your favorite podcast player, make sure to check out FTWpodcast.com for more about us and how to get involved with upcoming discussions and any type of discussion we have and how to give us feedback you can find us on twitter and facebook all those links are listed on ftwpodcast.com for all those listening in the live chat tonight here at ftwlive.com hey glad you can make it and uh yeah it's gonna be a good show we're gonna go over to tna rob we gotta talk tna (sighs) so (laughs) I mean, this is, this is coming up. This is not the final show going into uh, Final Destination, but it's the closest thing to it that we can talk about. What really stood out to you? Uh, well, we'd been talking about we'd we'd been talking so long about how TNA was really presenting a strong product and was really starting to turn the corner and was actually putting out a better wrestling program than shows like Raw. And last week we were talking about how maybe that was starting to change. Any doubt as to which direction TNA was going was eliminated if you watched this Impact. Um, As I sat through Impact, it looked more like a really, really bad soap opera than a wrestling program to me. Wow. Okay, now, are you talking U.S. soap opera? Are you talking, like, the Telemundos from um, Mexico? or I'm, I'm, I'm talking, you know, take the worst soap opera you can find from anywhere in the world, and it would be comparable to this week's impact, especially uh, kicking off when we had Hogan uh, calling out Bully Ray, and Brooke runs down to the ring, and you just, uh, it made my head hurt. It really did. So, I mean, the, you know, the show show was there. They you had Hogan calling up Billy Ray and trying to find out what's going on with him and Brooke. And then it goes over to James Storm and AJ Styles. I mean, give give me some feedback on that, bro. Uh, well, I, I mean, you've got James Storm going on about how you know. He got screwed over by Storm, which he kind of did. Uh, he let Storm bait him in, everything like that. Um, and then he's interrupted by AJ Styles, who basically accuses him of whining. I laughed my ass off at that, considering AJ Styles has been doing nothing but whining this entire year. Uh, Good Lord, this is so... Do you know how refreshing this is, Rob? It's like you've finally seen the light after one month. I'm so proud of you right now. I honestly, I'm nearly shedding a tear. Well, <laughs> see, I don't know what you... You must not listen. I, I've said time and time again that when TNA yeah. screws up, I call them out on it. Yeah, yeah, you do, but at the same time, you argue then some very daft points about how it's good and at the same time when it's not at some points. So this is where I'm just, I'm just very proud of you. Deep down in my heart, I, I'm just I'm pretty happy. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Um, the the roots uh, are rude. The storm AJ segment ends with uh, Storm trying to get AJ focused for the tag team tonight, and AJ Styles go off looking like somebody shot his a uh, puppy dog or something, setting him up for a pepper and a pole match. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, that was an awful match. Wasn't it, though? Um, show continues on. Hogan confronts Austin Aries. And then 
you know, listens to everybody talk about why they get a title shot. And he eliminates Kenny King. Talon on and it, uh, TNA Asylum.com asks us the question, what the hell is TNA doing with Kenny King? He was one of the more impressive ex-wrestlers this past summer, and yet he hasn't been used since Hardcore Justice. Maybe he's regretting making the jump to TNA at this point. There could be something else we don't know, but so far I would say TNA hasn't held up to their end of their bargain. Uh, Rob, what do you have to say about that one? Um, I'd say that the storyline reason for eliminating eliminating Kenny King was really weak. I mean, if you're going to eliminate him simply because he laughed at Austin Aries' joke of not uh, uh, of the joke that Austin Aries made when he was laying on Hogan's desk about how he didn't understand how Brooke Hogan could spend so much time laying on her back there. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you, if you're going to eliminate Kenny King for that, you have to eliminate every X Division wrestler there because they all laughed at it. There wasn't an X Division wrestler who wasn't laughing when um, Austin Aries made that joke. So I, I have to agree with Talon on this. I don't know what the hell TNA's not, uh, TNA has planned for Kenny King, but they've really dropped the ball. They need to start utilizing him more, especially with how thin TNA is in the X Division ranks at the moment. They could really use somebody like a Kenny King to help get things going and to help keep things moving in the right direction. Well, do you think that maybe TNA, you know, after after Hardcore Justice, maybe that they don't feel that he's where they need him to be? That's why they haven't really been using him? They maybe... uh, that's a hard argument to make. I mean, he he was doing really good. Uh, I mean, he's got great talent. He's got great mic skills. He's used to performing in front of a crowd. I mean, he's got a lot of the things you look for in a in a wrestler, and he's got a great move set. Um, I really don't see how you can make the argument that he isn't ready to be used, especially when your current champion of the X Division is RVD, who's still half-assing mass, uh, matches. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, <clears throat> I apologize. You're, you're, you're right there. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm dying here. Apparently, I, <clears throat> I. It's so dry up here. Trying to fill Harrison's high, high, high throne. <laughs> <laughs> Gets a little no, hard I, to breathe up there, doesn't it? It does a little bit. Um. So let's talk about the uh, the main event, which was Austin Aries versus Rob Van Dam. I, I mean, Aries beats Rob Van Dam by DQ after Bully Ray gets involved. Any any thoughts on that? I mean, they eliminated Cash and Ion from the from the the shot here. I mean. Garvin, what do you what do you have to say on this? Yeah, I think the only saving grace, the only main saving grace about having Hogan involved in in, in this, well, n- not even having Hogan involved, just the in, the entire storyline. The only saving grace is that we're seeing some really great mic work from Austin Aries, and you know the what they're building towards, at least what it seems like they're building towards, is Aries versus Bully Ray, and that's a match that we all raved about the last time we saw it. So. Um, I think that's that's the only saving grace. But, you know, yeah, to eliminate Kid Cash and Ion only on the 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 thought that Hogan wants to see a- Ares get his teeth kicked in by RVD, that made absolutely no sense. That that was that seemed pointless. Like why involve all these guys that we we would actually want to see in a match against RVD, especially Kenny King, not get it and and be eliminated in this fashion. It it it, it was it was a difficult uh thing to swallow, you know, for for a TNA fan because that's those are things that we would want to see. And what and what's that mean for Austin Aries too? Like Rob, why are they putting Austin Aries back in the X division if there's no plans for him to be in the X division in the next couple months? Because you can't think that they're going to keep him there. I yeah, it it, it makes no sense. I mean. I, I think Austin Aries 
really hit the the nail on the head when Hogan goes on about how, you know, the only person who hates Austin Aries more than Hogan does is RVD. And I'm like, really? I can think of a couple people. But that aside, why does RVD hate Austin Aries? What has Austin Aries done to RVD? These two, it, it... there, there was not a single part of that storyline that makes any sense. The only, the only possible sense that comes from being putting Austin Aries back in the X division is what Austin Aries said um, when he was picked. He's like, you know, this is what I wanted. I wanted to get picked. I want to get the X division title so that I can go to Final Destination or Destination X and. Uh, you know, trade it in and get my world title back. But even for that storyline to play out, you're taking Austin Aries, who's now a main eventer, you're taking him out of the main event picture for months at a time. And it it, it still doesn't make sense. It's just horrible booking. And I don't know what the hell TNA was thinking when they put together this show and the storyline for this show. Yeah, and it's it's definitely weird. I mean, obviously they need Austin Aries on TV, but they can't keep him in that world title feud because of what's going on with Bobby Roode and James Storm. I mean, those those are the those are the main players right now. Austin Aries doesn't fit into that mix, but I don't think this <laughs> this specifically was the right place to put him. I still liked him. Yeah, I still like what he did, but it just it, like you said, it just doesn't make sense to have RVD versus Austin Aries in a title match. You know, right now, with no with no build up other than oh, Hogan doesn't like Aries, so he's going to give him a title match. Like that makes sense. Yeah, I, I mean it. And Hogan's smarter than this. Hogan's a better bad guy than this. If if Hogan wants to punish a guy and put by putting them in a title uh, title match, you pull an Eric Bischoff and you put him in like. Uh, a fatal four way or a triple threat match with two guys with two or three guys who all hate Austin Aries and you watch Austin Aries get the shit kicked out of them. There were, if if you're looking to, or if you're looking to punish Austin Aries, you let bully Ray take him there. If Hogan was serious about wanting to punish Austin Aries, there were many, many better ways he could have chose, uh, chose to do so it's it's just the storyline made no sense and by the end of impact i was wondering what the hell they were doing okay <clears throat> so let's move on to uh a comment from a facebook listener uh jesse wrote us and said do you guys think matt morgan's new look on tonight's impact is is awesome as i do looks like he should be in street fighter some old school knockoff wrestling game but he looks <clears throat> awesome Thoughts, uh, thoughts, anyone on uh, Jesse or on Matt Morgan? He yeah, I, I'm sorry, Rob. I, I think I think it's awesome in the standpoint of Team Beard has another member with an awesome beard. I mean, it's 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 oh, stellar dear. right now. It's 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 got some room to grow. I think I think he could go the distance, like uh, Mike Knox, even uh, an EY, if we want to keep in in in, in the TNA realm. I think those are the beards that he needs to aim for, plus the cape. The cape is fantastic. I think you may have issues. Just letting you know now. I mean, I, I want to say Austin Aries, though, was the one who really brought the cape back. Yeah, but, but anyway, I mean, but it the, doesn't but work as well. Is glorious. It doesn't work yeah. as well with the beard and with just the, the monstrous size of Matt Morgan. Do you think we'll see the return of the elevator? Everyone's been calling for that. Like everyone on Twitter, uh, especially Diva Jill, she's been asking over and over again for the return of the elevator. I think they should. Definitely. You know, that's still one of my favorite moves I've seen in a long time. It's, you know, pretty cool to watch, but I understand he can't do it to bigger guys. Of course they want him to fight bigger guys. But regardless, that's my little bit of a rant on the elevator. So, so, go ahead, Rob. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'd love, I'd love to see the uh, the elevator make a return. I mean, for as dangerous a move 
um, as you could argue that it is. Uh, Matt Morgan controls it very well, but like you said, you know, there's a bit of an issue with him picking up bigger guys and using it on them. So the carbon foot pit, the carbon footprint makes a good backup move, I guess. But I'd like to see him pick up somebody and just plant their ass on the on the mat. That would be kinky. <laughs> that would be kinky. You know. I better not go any further with that. No. No, because they're not really planting the ass on the mat. They're planting everything else while they... Anyway. Well, you'd, you'd know more about that than I would, so... hey So, <laughs> I guess let's just shut our mouths on that one and go over to gut check. Um, all right, Rob. Gut check. Wes Briscoe. <sighs> Wes Briscoe lost to Garrett Bischoff. Do I really need no. to say any more? No, he he defeated Garrett Bischoff. Yes. Oh yeah, he he, he defeated. That's right. Um, it's just he performed so badly. I I blanked out and thought. Um, I wasn't happy with this because the potential that Wes Briscoe has is there, um, but. There were wrestlers without the connections that Wes Briscoe had that had Briscoe's level of talent or more talent than Briscoe that didn't get the contract. Um, And you heard it come out in the judges' comments. The judges basically said, we're going to give you a comment because Kurt Angle's been bugging us and because we know your family. Um, now granted, anybody who's any kind of a wrestling fan realizes that it's a lot easier to break into the wrestling business if you have connections. Um, but I think that kind of overt comment, uh, and that kind of overt, um, pointing out of the the connections and everything in the gut check segment, I think is actually going to end up hurting gut check as it goes forward well but this is obviously not a normal gut check this is you know a, a, a story based thing so i i don't think this has anything to do with gut check itself but i'm, I'm wondering they like, did it under gut check i i know i know but i i don't think i know this... it's, i i mean i know it's storyline based too but they did but they used gut check to to, to carry out the storyline that that was a bad move on tna's part i think but there were also some other you know, factors in this. Like we didn't have Al Snow, so we didn't know what what you know what's going on with with him and D'Lo Brown uh, got involved. So obviously, there's there's something else going on that we should probably look at. Like where where do you think that they're going to go with this? Wes Briscoe is a member of Aces and Eights, and he uh, took out a Al Snow because Al Snow was going to vote no. That's really all I've got, and I know it's stretching, but it's really not doing anything that TNA management and creative hasn't been doing with the Aces and Eights storyline anyways. Um, when you look at the Aces and Eights storyline, what I just threw out is, complete, is completely reasonable and possible. Yeah, I, I don't think you're you're on a line, Rob. I think that's exactly where they're going. I, I have the same theory, except for... I also throw in, uh, you know, Garrett Bischoff being involved too. I, I throw out the idea that D'Lo Brown was involved, that, you know, they were all involved in this together it's because it all seemed to work out perfectly, you know, if that's the direction they're going to go. You might even want to throw out Kurt Angle's name in there. Even though he did get attacked backstage a, a few months ago, he, there, you know, it's possible. It's possible that Angle might be involved. But for sure, I think D'Lo was involved. I think. Uh, Garrett Bischoff is involved, and I think that Wes Briscoe is involved just to get someone from Aces and Eights on the inside. Oh yeah, I think um, it makes perfect sense. And Eric Eric Bischoff, I could probably see being involved. Uh, Kurt Angle, D'Lo Brown, I'm not too sure about, but it it's entirely possible with how TNA has been writing the Aces and Eights storyline so far. Okay. 
I mean, you you could write off Angle being involved as the fact that even though it doesn't make sense because he's been attacked by Aces and Eights, you can also say that every person that Aces and Eights has tried to take out, they've taken out, except for Kurt Angle, who's always been one step ahead of them. I think that's a pretty pretty valid point, Rob. But, I mean, okay, we'll we'll move on to looking forward to next week. Uh, it's announced Devon versus Samoa Joe for the TV title, and it's going to be an epic match, and Joe's going to kill him. See, I I like the idea because you know Devon didn't really lose his title. Right, D, uh, Devon's title got sidetracked first by. Bound for glory, and then when Devon ran into the contract disputes, he kind of lost the title that way. Right. And I, I, I can't wait to see if Devon's going to get his title back. But it should be, it should be a good match. And I think you're right. I think Joe is going to kill him. Uh, the other match that was announced was Kurt Angle versus Doc. Where do you think that one's going to go? Uh, this will be one of those matches that I think should let us know whether or not Angle's involved. Um, if Angle gets taken out and injured, it's going to be pretty safe to say, okay, Angle wasn't involved. He was a good guy in all of this. If Angle manages to stay one step ahead of aces and eights and manages to weasel out of danger again, I think you, I, I think you can make a strong case that he might be in on something. Okay. Anybody else want to comment on it? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I guess that's kind of true. I mean, if you look at the last match that Angle had, he had with Devon and basically was able to escape the ring uh, without any type of, uh, you know, attack from Aces. I mean, like, they, they, they stormed the ring, but he was able to get out in time. It did seem kind of odd that that happened. I think that was something that we all talked about over the last pay-per-view. Um so that's possible, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and what was odd about it was the fact that Devon taps out and Kurt Angle darts out of the ring and most of the ring is surrounded by aces and eights, but they just stood there and watched him leave. Whereas mm-hmm. with any other wrestler, they would have moved to cut him off. But then again, TNA is writing this week by week, so you never know what's going on. Could could they be letting Vince Russo back in? Ooh. Uh God, I hope not. <laughs> so you say that now, but well, I mean, who knows? Okay, so let's let's talk a bit about Final Resolution, uh, namely the fact that, uh, well, I mean, we've got we've got some speculation matches here. Um, like a TNA versus AC and Aces and Eights match, which would be Angle. We're speculating Angle, Garrett, and uh, Briscoe against Devon, the Director of Chaos, and Armbreaker. Um, where are you guys laying on this one? I do think we're going to have some kind of a TNA versus uh, Aces and Eights match. I think Devon, DOC, and Armbreaker are good choices for Team Aces and Eights. Um, If we're right about Garrett and Briscoe being with Aces and Eights, this could be where we see that revealed when they portray, you know, they might portray Angle and you might see a five-on-one beatdown of Kurt Angle. Um, And for that reason, I would go with Team Aces and Eights winning. If the match stays the way it is right now, okay. Uh, Lee, I'd go. I'd, I'd probably agree, with Rob. I would go with a Senate winning if he says that. They need something because, as we said, it's been booked on a week by week basis. And at the minute, for, for me, I, I, I'm not really digging what's going on at the minute. To be brutally honest, with a Senate. So I, I'd like to actually see them win and just get over for a little bit. Okay, Lee. I mean, Garvin. Wow, oh, I pulled a Harrison there, Harrison. didn't I? Harrison. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if this is the direction they're going, which it does seem like they're going to go, 
I have a hard time believing that each member of, of, of who we're suggesting, which is Angle, Garrett, and Briscoe versus Aces and Eights, I have a hard time believing that all members are involved. So that would be a good sign that Angle is not involved. Um, You know, just because Garrett's not, you know, they're all going to turn on Garrett. That would be kind of lame. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. But as far as that goes... uh. If there, if that, if that is the scenario that that we're gonna go with, uh, aces and eights would win because there would be a turn of some fashion. So I okay. agree. I'm actually gonna say that Team TNA is gonna win because when Garrett and Briscoe turn on Angle, and possibly leave him, leave him to to hang, I think I think Angle is gonna end up taking the pin. So, or no, I'm sorry. There'll be a DQ. It'll it'll go almost no contest, or and Angle's gonna, yeah. My points on Team TNA to go against Aces and Eights actually getting an official win. There we go. <laughs> God, that was well really done. Tough. Well done. All right. Uh, another speculation max match. Oh my! God. I need another <laughs> beer. Uh, X Division Championship RVD versus maybe Kenny King, maybe Zima Ion, maybe. Uh, Kid Cash, maybe Christian York, uh, RVD or random X Division wrestler. Rob, who are you taking? Uh, well, until we get a more, uh, until we get a clearer picture of who random wrestler would be, I'm gonna have to go with RVD. Um, I could change that based on who they put up. Fair to enough. face RVD. Fair enough. Lee? It's going to be RVD. Yeah, exactly. We've got to wait until see who uh, see the Jutes put against him. But RVD for the minute, unfortunately. No. Okay. Garvin? Uh, I'm going to go with random. Random person. Uh, you Ooh. know, if you, if you look back to this week's Impact, uh, Hogan said to Kid Cash that, you know, his time is coming. And I, I almost want to say that this might be his time. You know, we might see Kid Cash versus RVD, and finally see a uh, you know uh, a solid title reign for for Cash. I think that would be interesting, uh, mostly because I don't like RVD, and I'm sad that he's the champion. And how's I'd rather the, um, have Kid how's Cash. The, how's the random wrestler done in terms of um, well, how's it done? You know, over the past couple of weeks, has it been in good form? Or? <clears throat> well, the thing <laughs> is, is look at the. The X Division in general. I mean, they. <laughs> this was like RVD's first appearance in two, three weeks. Uh, you know, they aren't giving any of these guys a lot of time at all. So, you know, at know. this point, I, I think I, I think I think they can they can make some. Uh, you know, they can they can experiment a little, and I think you know RVD has done um, as as much as he's going to do, and as well as he's going to do. Um, I think they can move the title to someone who. Uh, will ultimately do better. Just make sure they don't like RVD experiment, for Christ's sake. What? It had potential. I said, I said don't, I said, well, I, did no one get that? I said don't let RVD I, experiment. I okay, I, you kind of got a little low in the volume there and it kind of broke up a little bit. That's why I was asking. Well, that's just a bit shit. Well, it's just a bit of fucking accent. No, I kid, I kid. I'm still going out. Worse than Harrison. I know. I I'm totally off my game tonight. Jumping the, I volunteered for the hosting duties tonight when Harrison uh, said he wasn't going to be on, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm suffering for it. It's, so. it's turned into this. Yeah, it's turned into something a lot a lot worse. Yeah. So maybe it I should. It could be just... worse. No, no, it could be worse. It could be Garth. Then we're ready and shit. No, no. Then we're excelling. But um, yeah, I'm gonna have to stick with you guys. I'm gonna say. The majority of you guys, I'm going to say RVD is going to walk away with the title. Uh, I don't see Kenny King w- winning it. I don't see Kid Cash winning it. Ion, I don't think it's his time to hold it again. And Christian York, I think, is a little too fresh. So Christian York might have a chance, but he's really the only one. Uh, Kid Cash has a horrible record against <laughs> RVD. For, for, for some reason, they never let Kid Cash beat RVD. ECW almost never let Cash beat RVD either. It doesn't matter what company these two are in. RVD almost always manages to get the win over King Cash. Uh, or Here, Kid Cash, rather. 
Well, maybe it's because he thinks he's a kid and he's like 45. That could be. That 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 could be. I mean, maybe it's just a case of, will you change your fucking gimmick already? Just tweak it a little bit, like a yeah, nipple. Okay, I mean, well, okay, well you, go, you tell him that. You go and tell him that to his face. I will. Okay. Because I'm not gonna. I'll just... have Joe with me, and we're both have weapons. <laughs> okay, what the fuck? What the fuck's Joe gonna do? For Christ's sake, he's. I know he's married, but he can't do much for you. Joe will be my. I human will kill shield. him. Like they, like the crowd says, Joe's gonna kill you. <clears throat> I'll kill him. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the speculated TV championship match. Uh, we already briefly touched on this idea, but Devon versus Samoa Joe for the TV championship. Yeah, uh, I... Lee, what are you thinking? Oh, Garvin, go ahead. Sorry, I was trying to jump in. Uh, you know, I I, I like the, I like the idea of Devon getting this 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 match, but I can't see what scenario it would make sense. Like, why would he get a title shot? Like, what would what would have to happen on this week's Impact so that Devon gets a rematch on Final Resolution? Mm. I I can't think of it's an easy thing to book it. Yeah. Chair, chair, chair shot on Samojo. Or some, something's going to happen where the match is going to get broken up. You know, Ace and Nates gets involved. And it's going to leave it a no contest, so we'll see it happen. Either that or, incredibly worst case scenario, <clears throat> Devon wins the title from Samoa Joe and they book the rematch for the pay per view. That's not a bad Ooh, idea. Dude. That's actually, that okay, that's, the, that's, that's a scenario that would, that would make sense. Yeah, it would make I wouldn't, sense. I wouldn't like it, but <laughs> no. it makes sense. No, that definitely, that, that could make sense. Um, see, I, I'm going to say in this instance, Samoa Joe wins. Lee? Well, yeah, it's got to be Samoa Joe. It's, it's Joe's still going to kill you. Okay. No, I'm gonna, exactly. So everybody's in agreement on that one then. So Devon doesn't take it? Nah. Uh, okay. Yeah, Samoa Joe leaves final resolution with the title, but I do like Correct. the idea of maybe Devon winning this week. Okay. I think you meant. I, I just I don't see it at all. I, I, I really don't. I just it's wrong. It is wrong. It's all the same. Way. Yeah, but okay, just like what what's coming from the live chat, Diva Joe in the live chat. She says, you know, Devon wins on impact with shenanigans, so Joe gets a, a, a gimmick match at the pay per view. You know, you have Aces and Eights gets involved this week to cause uh Joe to lose the title, and then he gets the rematch because he goes to Hogan and, and you know, demands it kind of thing. I think I think that, that would make sense and it would fit it would fit the overall storyline for the most part. It's too weak, though. It's too cramped. It's too, it's too much of an excuse to book a match rather it's, than anything yeah. else. It's definitely too last minute, but, you know, who else is, is Samoa Joe going to fight at, at, at Final Resolution? There there really is no one. Uh, just give him Ryback, for Christ's sake. Have it done. Um, Ryback is in another company. All right, get Goldberg uh, back for him. Get Goldberg. <laughs> Oh, uh, Goldberg versus Samoa Joe. That'd be awesome. That match would be awesome and terrible all at the same time. Okay. Slightly off topic, but since we're talking Samoa Joe, did anybody catch the CM Punk tweet where someone asked him if you could face anybody in wrestling, uh, any wrestler in existence that isn't currently active, who would you face? And he said Samoa Joe. Wow. <laughs> Just to be clear, Punk. though, that, that that isn't the first time he's he's made that comment. I think he said the same thing at at, at the, his first Comic Con that was publicized. He said, "Yeah, he said right." But, but one, if he right, but if, if it's one thing to say, if I could wrestle anybody ever, I'd pick Samoa Joe. That's one thing, but saying anybody who's not active and still pick Samoa Joe, what's that say yeah. about TNA? Well, yeah, it's I, a dig. I, I mean, I think. I think part of that, too, is CM Punk has been on record a few times kind of agreeing with us that TNA has not used Samoa Joe properly. So, I mean, it, it doesn't really justify the the not active thing, but, I mean, I know CM Punk has been kind of of the voice that Samoa Joe is one of many wrestlers getting screwed over. 
I would totally, I mean, I totally agree. I mean, I, I would love to see that match. So, hey. Oh, God, yeah. CM Punk versus Samoa Joe. Jesus well, Christ. Uh, if, if, you've, if, you've, if you've seen it in the indies, then if you put it onto a bigger stage, that could be interesting. Yeah, I mean, can you mention that at a WrestleMania next year? Uh, no. No, I can't. Because WWE would never go there. You yeah. never know. No, I don't think they would. No, I, I, think I, I, I think you can. The WWE has a proven track record with Samoan wrestlers. Yeah, but, well, I mean like Umaga. Yeah, like Umaga. And just about everybody else who's Samoan that isn't named uh, Dwayne Johnson. What? Who's he? The Rock. Yeah, they'll end up he'll end up with a few with a few matches and they'll be short. They'll be about three minutes. Wait, did somebody say three minutes? No, we got <laughs> exactly. three minutes and we're out of here. God, that was it. Do you know what? That was, I, I, everyone shits on that. I love that. I like the gimmick, too. It just got a little annoying. I thought it was quite the, gi- the gimmick was good, but they had them start losing too soon. Anyway, we're still talking TNA. Uh, right. Another speculated really match. Supposed to be. Yeah, it's my fault. Uh, speculation here. Speculation match. Our final speculation match. Bully Ray versus Austin Aries. Um, Rob, you you seem to indicate that you're expecting Bully Ray to win that one. Why? Because I think Bully Ray is going to beat the living shit out of uh, Austin Aries for making jokes about his girlfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I did did I uh, spoil the storyline there that DNA wants people to believe isn't happening, but actually is writing? Well. I mean, hey, that's that's your thought, uh, Lee. Where are you going with this one? Undecided. 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 All right. I'm undecided. I, I don't. I don't. I don't like to make a comment unless I know where I think, or at least I think I know where it's going, and I'm not sure. Okay. So, so Lee Lee does not pick Garvin. Uh, I'm also sort of undecided. I'm leaning towards uh, Bully Ray. I think, um, you know, generally speaking, they give a lot of people a cycle. So Aries was winning a lot. Now it's time for him to to, to lose uh, a few matches. And I think it would make sense to have this uh, be a match that he would lose just because, you know, they're obviously going to continue the storyline, which we don't like. But, you know, I think Bully winning... Defending uh, Brooke Hogan's honor is uh, the way that they're probably going to go versus, you know, and losing. finally convincing Hogan to trust him. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's been a big key of this, too, is that Bully wants Hogan to trust him. So Bully is going to, you know, defend Brooke's honor to get that. I think that I mean, really, that's probably going to be the only way for him to, you know, in a sense. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't like the match. I don't like the story. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't like the story. I love the match. And I think it's probably going to be one of the matches of the night if they do, in fact, book it. But yes. I'm, I'm Austin leaning... Aries and Bully Ray will put on a great match. But I, I'm leaning towards Bully just, in this scenario. Just on that note, um, what you, you guys just need to trust me that I will win this draft. Just to let you know. You can you can trust in me. Believe him. Okay. Right. All right. What you run about? What? Don't, don't, what are you looking at now? You run about the trust storyline, and I'm just adding to that. Just saying you can trust me in relation to that. What? What were you all sounding confused for? This is like one of those Talking. transitions that like Harrison tries to make that no one gets. You are filling in for Harrison. Yeah. Now. <laughs> wow. Excuse Everyone's got to take a shift. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with Bully Ray to win this one. Um. Just because they want to push the Bully Ray storyline, and and on top of that, why is he still called Bully Ray? I think uh, James Hornsby from Botchbot dot com nailed it uh, a few weeks ago when he did a comic where you know everyone's picking at a kid, and then Bully Ray comes up and says, "You got a lot of heart and guts. I respect the crap out of you." He's just not a bully anymore, right? Yeah, usually. Maybe he'll go back to being brother. Or Bubba. Brother Wade. No, can't go back to Bubba. No, that's okay. trademarked. Trademarked yeah. by the WWE now. That's right. Sign yeah. the wrong paperwork. 
Uh, from the live chat, how about Buddy Ray? Buddy Everyone's Ray. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> buddy Ray. He comes oh, out in shit. footy pajamas. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like a bad Eugene. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to go over to the official he match. Back his stupid stuttering gimmick for a little while. Hey, that would work. We'll touch back to the and bring back some of the tie dye. All right. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he's he's going to be born a little less than a month, man. Uh, so going to the official matches: AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels in a match that we've seen countless times. Uh, Garvin, where are you picking here? Or Garvin stepped away, and I totally missed that notification. Uh, Lee, where are you going on this one? I'll take a chance and say Chris Daniels. And it is a big chance, because I don't think he's going to win. But I'm, I'm, fuck it. Go for it. I, I do think AJ will win overall, but, but my heart is telling me to go with Chris Daniels. And your heart will go on. Uh, Rob? Let's see. Styles versus Daniels 5,000. Uh... I'm going to go with AJ Styles just because they're setting it up too strongly for Daniels to win. I mean, you've got AJ Styles moping around. He's wrestling uncharacteristically bad. I mean, he's really pushing the distracted gimmick. He's missing uh, a lot of moves that he hits. He He's having trouble with even his trademark stuff. He, AJ Styles is really selling the doesn't have his head in the game thing. Um, and I think that points to him winning. Okay. Garvin? I think it's too early to stop that. You know, I think, I think it's too early for them to basically, you know, turn his luck around. Uh, I think it would make more sense for AJ to lose this match cleanly, distracted, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, to continue the direction that they're going to go in. Because I- I'm really interested in this direction. I-, I would rather them continue pushing this to see what they do versus change you know, change his, his momentum and have AJ uh, meandering a bit uh, like-, like they normally do. So, And also, I could be wrong. I didn't do any research, so I probably am. But I don't remember Christopher Daniels ever winning one of these matches. Like the last, uh, the, the last two or three, it's been AJ winning. Technically, sure. technically, Daniels has won. Uh, they had an Iron Man match, um, which technically ended in a tie, but uh, Christopher Daniels locked uh, AJ Styles in the Koji clutch, and AJ Styles passed out before time ran out of the what's, match. What's but, the time frame on that? Uh. This would be early 2000s. I want to say 2005, but I could be wrong. Okay, well, for as long as I've been a TNA fan, Daniels has not won one of these matches. And really, AJ has been on somewhat of a roll. Uh, I mean, despite him being distracted, you know, he, he, he is still winning matches. You know, he won the match last week with uh, James Storm, despite James Storm basically winning the match. It's still a win in his column, so... I think I think I'd rather see them actually push AJ into the pit before they they bring him out and do probably nothing with him. Yeah, so would I. But the problem with that is they're advertising this as the last match ever between Styles and Daniels. Now, obviously, we know that's not going to happen. These two will fight again. But to have uh, but to have AJ Styles lose, I mean. Just, I mean, kind of really shoots. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, also, Ken in the live chat is saying he's listing matches uh, in the last two years. He listed two matches in the last two years where AJ, or I'm sorry, where Christopher Daniels won, but they're both impacts. I think, you know, what what I'm specifically talking about is like the big payoff pay per view matches. Daniels doesn't win those, as far as I can remember. So I I, I like yeah, the idea the, of Daniels winning and them having a, another match, you know, within a year, maybe yeah, Bound Iron, for Glory, like uh, it's being talked about in the live chat as well. 
and the Iron Man match I was describing was a pay-per-view, but I don't remember which one. Like I said, it was back a while. But, so, yeah, they have gone kind of back and forth, but. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to have to go with AJ only because he's the TNA pretty boy, and like you said, Christopher Daniels never seems to make matches. That's right. Really- Basic. It is. It's just he doesn't win. Uh, the Knockouts Championship. Mickey James versus the champion Tara. Who? Let's start with Rob. Uh, Mickey James is going to win because she's still coming. I, I think she's still coming off of the uh, welcome back from, you know, her health issues that caused her to take time off. And she is the female John Cena. It's probably written in her contract that she has to have at least six title reigns a year. So I think they're going to give it to her. And when you factor in that the Tara storyline is really just stalling and not going anywhere, it makes a lot more sense to give it to Mickey James. Okay. Uh, Lee? You say she's a female John Cena, though, but John Cena hasn't won a title this year. She, what can I say? She's better at being John Cena than John Cena is. <laughs> she, she takes injuries off at right times. I'll give her that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I can say, I, I'll play it safe. No, I'll go. I'll go with Rob and say, um, say Mickey James will get the title because she's still on a little farewell. You know, sorry, not farewell. A little comeback. Yeah, but. At the same time, I would see Tara winning as well, just because she, she's she's just Tara. Tara's great. Oh, I, I like I'm a huge fan of Tara. I just don't like the storyline they're running with her currently. Oh no, I don't either. No, but Correct. as far as, as as far as women wrestlers go, Tara is definitely one of the most skilled res- women wrestlers out there today. Absolutely. So Lee, you're going with Mickey then? Or yeah. You... Okay. No, we'll go with Mickey. Okay, I'm gonna go with Mickey too, only because she's a she's more of an icon and someone they can put on advertising. Uh, Tara's just got you know the the boyfriend sleaze gimmick going on, and it's nah. <laughs> it's nah. <laughs> it's nah. You Carbon? summed it up perfectly. What took me over a minute, Joe hit in like thirty seconds with nah. Is, what can I like, say? I'm a wordsmith. The gimmick smith. that y'all doing? Meh. Uh, no, yeah, no. the story that they're doing there <laughs> is pretty bad, but um, I, I, I got to think that they're going to go a little bit longer on it um, because really they just introduced that, you know, within the last two months. So they, they have to continue to yeah. push it and to give Mickey the title right off the bat uh, irritates me and I don't want to see it. I'd rather more build up. Um, and I think having James back to take on Tara next pay-per-view will be awesome, but Tara needs to have the title now. So, Tara wins. Okay. Like uh, th- what, Lee? I'd like to very quickly thank Gar for reminding me that it's only been a couple of months since this gimmick was introduced. <laughs> it seems like forever, but it has only actually been a couple of months. Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> you summed it my, up you summed up my thoughts perfectly. Like, Ooh. dear God. Um, moving on to the TNA Tag Team Championships. Chavo and Hernandez against Joey and Matt. Joey Ryan and Matt Morgan. Where do you think that one's going to lie, Lee? Um, there's only really one team who can win Chavo and Hernandez, but I am so bored of them now. Um, I'm, I don't care what anybody else says. I'm fed up with Charvo and his stupid fucking ways. I get very annoyed by him because he's just not his own person character and it really bores me. And I don't, I don't necessarily like what they're doing with Joey Ryan either and Mike Morgan to be brutally honest, but I'd take that over um, over Charvo at this point in time because he's just he's killing me. It really is. Garvin? Lee, I agree with you about Chavo. I think this has been a wasted opportunity with him. They've done absolutely nothing to get him to connect with the fans, get him to connect with with anything. He's, uh, you know, how, how often has he been in the ring for TNA since he debuted? 
four times maybe yeah. i mean it's ridiculous he needs to be out there more uh it's it's not going over well but i think you're blind or you're just ignorant if you think joey and matt morgan aren't awesome and they're gonna win so, so, uh, uh, so, so say that again wow I think, I think you're either blind or yep. ignorant or a hipster just trying to you know say that they're not awesome even though you know they are Oh, um, oh! You just wait. I'm, 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 I'm lining something back up for that. But you, you can, you just wait. I'll let you have that one. You just wait till that, later. I was gonna say that's the, the best British comeback I've heard. Uh, I'm going to go with Joey Ryan and Matt Morgan because I, I think that they're going to be, they're they're the up and coming team, and they're going to be what's really going to draw people into the tag team division because they saw that Chavo isn't working just because you. Team Chavo up with another Mexican wrestler, even if it's someone as big as Supermax. Hernandez just he's slow. He you know, they sent him down to Triple A to get a get work, you know, some time ago. And they thought he was good enough and they brought him back up, but ugh. I I don't think he's living up to their expectations. So I think he's also helping drag down uh Chavito. And uh Chavo at least sped up the three amigo suplexes that Eddie used to do. So now he actually looks a little bit more like Eddie doing it and not like a hapless oaf. <laughs> Cause really watching him do that in like epic slow motion where it takes him five minutes to do the damn move. Really? Ugh. Don't do it. Commission. You could go to commercial and come back, he'll be doing the third one. <laughs> just just it, it to me that almost it's it's disrespect to Eddie. I know that sounds stupid, and a lot of people are probably going to bitch me out for it, but yeah, that's my opinion. Yeah, YouTube's going to hate you for that. Yeah, YouTube's going to hate me. Yeah. Um, World Heavyweight Championship, Bobby Roode versus Jeff Hardy. Um, huh? Are we oh, sorry, Rob. Bit? Sorry, Rob. I, I know I talk for a while, but geez, are we just cutting me out here? Yeah, yeah, we are. No. Go ahead, Rob. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to side with Lee, and I'm going to pick Chavo and Hernandez. Uh, I agree that Chavo has not really – that Chavo and TNA haven't really made the 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 most of Chavo coming into TNA, but I think you're completely wrong about Hernandez. I think he has been making the most of his comeback. Joey Ryan and Matt Morgan, I think TNA is still building up, and I don't see them giving them the titles just yet. Uh, I'm going to stick with Chavo and, Her- and Hernandez. Okie dokie. So we're uh, pretty split on that one. Uh, World Heavyweight Championship, Bobby Roode versus Jeff Hardy. Garvin, what are you, where do you stand on it? Uh, I'm going with Jeff Hardy. I think it's too soon to take the title off him. Um, yeah, that's about it. Too soon. Okay. Uh, Rob, uh, Bobby Roode or Hardy? I'm going to go with Bobby Roode. Uh for James Storm to really get a shot at the title requires a good heel. And, hey, guess what? Bobby Roode happens to be a good heel. Okay. Lee? Yeah, it's going to sort of donkey dick, but, yeah, Jeff Hardy's going to win. All right. Uh, I'm going to go with Bobby Roode only because, yeah, the James Storm thing. Uh, you need to set up a good – few. you could have those guys run for a few months. And uh, that'll move you on further to where you want to put the title going forward. So I, I think you've got a feud built in between the two of those guys, so it's easy to use Jeff as the transitional champion. So uh, we'll talk more about this on Thursday as we'll sit down once again to talk TNA Final Resolution. Join us and the rest of the live chat hooligans on December 6th, directly after Impact goes off the air at 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh Jumping over to TNA news, uh, we're gonna do the we're gonna do this quick hit style. You got thirty seconds to to make a comment on this. Uh, in two thousand thirteen, it's being reported that TNA will move forward with a ten pay per view schedule. Both marches against all odds and September's No Surrender have been removed from the schedule. Quite possibly, we might see another two pay per views drop. But regardless, was it a good move? Uh, Rob, uh, yeah, I think so. I mean. It gives them more time to build up. Uh, it doesn't cost as much. Uh, it saves them a little bit of money from putting on 
uh, pay-per-views, and I don't know if wrestler pay rates change on pay-per-views, so it could save them money on a number of fronts. And all around it, it'll just make things better. I mean, you've only got 10 pay-per-views. That gives you a lot more time to build stuff up. Uh, Lee? Um, I don't think we're going to be able to tell until the actual next year, see what the quality of the TV is like. Then we'll judge from there. Okay, Garvin? Lee is correct, but I do think, uh, you know, just the idea that there that they'll have more time to build up pay-per-views is good. Uh, you know, I think they can they can give much needed TV time to like the X Division, everything else, if they have more time to spare between pay per views. So good move. Um, I'm going to agree with you guys. I think this was a good move. I think that really cramming too many pay per views down our throats is uh, a bad thing, and you know, really to, for good storytelling and uh, good build up. I think not rushing into pay-per-views is a great idea, so good move on TNA's part. Uh, this question was also asked um, uh, on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, Twitter Twitter's Ultra Warrior says less pay-per-views will help them properly build matches, but sadly I think it will just give Hogan more time to yap. Uh, Ronald James says, this is something I always thought WWE should be doing because there are too many pay-per-views and not enough time to build storylines for the next pay-per-view. It's a good idea for TNA because it gives them enough time to build storylines and a reason to order the pay-per-view. Nice point, Ronald. Uh, Deuce Loosely says this goes toward the belief that TNA has been making the right choices and heading in the right direction since before Bound for Glory last year. Just another reason their product is better than WWE. Uh, Lu- Louis Arvello says, great idea. If used right, they could actually have enough time to build every match instead of last minute fillers. Corey Farley says yes, it's a good idea. Hold on to the big only hold only the big pay per views and hold free events on Spike to take or replace them. Uh, Hell, since Spike is owned by Viacom, which will also own CBS, he's a few of these specials for national broadcasts. Introduce the TNA product for those to those who don't have uh, cable or satellite. So there you go on that one. Anyway, that's your week in TNA. Uh, check out FTW Podcast for more information about us and how to get involved in the future. There's even a support tab where you can buy uh, merchandise, donate to us, as well as links to us on iTunes and Stitcher, so you can rate us. Uh, thank you, everyone, in the live chat, except for Mike. We record FTW Podcast episodes on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 1 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time at FTWLive.com. That's all I've got, and we are out. See ya. Good night, everyone.